Today, I'm gonna to give you the secrets that will solve everything and give you the keys to a smooth and successful career as a filmmaker. No, sorry, that was cruel. There is no secret. The way to break into the industry is by practicing, by building up contacts and taking advantage of whatever lucky breaks come your way. Do this for a long time and things will start to happen. Your career is built slowly, one project at a time. Unfortunately, there's no way around that that I know of, but in the meantime, there are a few things you can do that will set you up for success before every shoot so that your journey to the top is as smooth as possible. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working in the documentary photography and filmmaking industries. Today, I'm gonna to share seven simple tricks that I've learned to minimize the chances of something going wrong on your next shoot. These things might seem dead simple, but if you take the time to run through them on a checklist before every shoot, you're gonna set yourself up for things to go well. The first thing that I'd suggest is that you take the time to set up the camera before you travel to your location. There's nothing worse than getting to set with everyone watching and realizing that you forgot an HDMI cable, done that, or the memory cards, done that, or even the camera body itself. That one sucked pretty bad, actually. Once on a shoot in Ecuador about the world's most expensive chocolate, we landed in our hotel room and realized that one of the cameras was missing the 15 millimeter rails we needed to attach uh, external batteries to the rig. It ended up costing us a fortune to source them at the last minute. We did it on our way out of town, but there was no other choice. If someone had taken the time to build up the rig before putting it on the plane, we would have saved a lot of stress and money. But video is only half the equation in documentaries, and that leads me to the second tip for a successful shoot. Editors and high-level producers have told me the same thing over and over again. Audio is as, if not more important than the picture. A good editor can work magic with a scene as long as they have clean audio. People will sit through bad video, but they will not listen to bad audio. Once when I was living in Mexico, I got hired to interview the former president. This was a man not well known to like journalists very much, and right from the start, he made it clear that he wanted me out of there as quickly as possible. He had no time for me tinkering around with gear and no patience for me whatsoever. So I found a good angle and got the lights set up really fast. Then I mic'd him up only to put my headphones on and hear a really bad signal. When I asked if he would let me make some adjustments, he basically said no, that I'd had my chance and now it was time to start. Not much I can say to that. So for an hour and a half, I sat there while I listened to his terrible audio, knowing that none of it could ever be used. Needless to say, I was never invited back to work for that production company. And that connects nicely to another audio related point that a lot of beginners ignore when shooting documentaries. If audio trumps video, then how can we as DPs make sure that we're giving it the attention it deserves? I used to just look at the audio meters every once in a while and make sure that things weren't clipping and consider my job with audio done. But then on a shoot, I got chewed out by a big time producer for missing an important scene and it changed the way I worked forever. Basically, I was following two characters while they walked through a city and at one time it looked like they weren't talking anymore so I stopped recording. A few minutes later, the producer ran over to me all excited and said, did you get that? Did you get that? When I asked what he was talking about, he said that they'd been whispering to each other about deeply personal memories related to our story that were some of the most powerful moments of the whole shoot. I hadn't shot any of it. Then he proceeded to lay into me for about about an hour about what an idiot I was for not monitoring audio, and I learned that lesson the hard way. If there's dialogue in your story, listen to the audio. It's the only way you know you're paying attention to the moments that matter. Now, terrible audio will drive your editor crazy, but that's not the only thing you can mess up that will make them hate you forever. Editors love organization. If you've ever tried to manage a big project in Adobe Premiere, you'll know how important it is to have things well organized, or the whole thing turns into a mess really quickly. So imagine what happens when an editor is importing the hard drive from your shoot and discovers that your camera thinks all the footage was shot in March of 2011 instead of last week. This now makes it much more difficult for him to archive the footage and to see when it fits the chronological order with the rest of the project. Set the date and time on your camera, please. It is such a small thing, but doing it wrong will drive everyone crazy in post. And having the time of day set properly every morning also helps with time code in case there's multiple cameras or audio recorders on the same shoot. Trust me, the director will spend more time with the editor than he will with you before the project is finished. So if they're cursing you every day for sloppy practices, that director is gonna remember it and forever associate your name with complaints. Speaking of post-production, there is something that's much more dangerous than just a wrongly set date. One of the scariest moments of any shoot is the moment that the cards come out of the camera and for a little while, all of the day's work is sitting on some tiny little plastic cards. Luckily, cards are so good these days that they almost never fail, but until you can make at least two more copies of everything, you have to guard those cards with your life. When you're doing simple projects that might only shoot a card or two per day, it's not such a big deal, 
scale, but as you get into more and more complex productions, that number starts to go up. Once on a shoot for a major British broadcaster, we had two shoulder mounted broadcast cameras, a director's handy cam, two mirrorless cameras, and I think six GoPros, plus a drone. We used all of them almost every day, and at the end of the day, there were sometimes like 30 or 40 cards to back up every single night. Now with quantities of media like that, it is easy to miss a card. They all look the same, and maybe it's understandable if you do, but nothing will make a director hate you like losing some of his hard-won footage. Luckily, there's a really simple way to make sure that you're backing up everything that was shot. What I do is I make two boxes, one on either side of the computer that I'm using to do the backups. Take some gaff tape and make two squares. On top of one, write in, and on top of the other, write out. That's it. Put all the media in the in square when you start and move them one by one into the out square. It's so simple, but since it always seems to be 3 a.m. when you're doing the backups, the simplicity is why it works so well. There's nothing to mess up and it gives you extra confidence that you can format the cards safely every morning. But even if you nail your backups every night, cameras aren't purely digital tools. They also use a lot of mechanical parts and those can cause you grief too. The good news is that 90% of hardware issues can be fixed with one item. Imagine the scene. I was filming a sports documentary in a prison in Mexico. We were there to see the prison's inmate-only football team play off against the team of professionals from Mexico City. The shoot called for a mix of tripod and gimbal shots, which meant moving the camera between the two platforms constantly all day. Everything was fine until later in the day when the director called for a quick gimbal transition and I realized that I couldn't get the tripod plate off the bottom of the camera. I cranked on that thing with everything that I had, but I just couldn't get it off. I had to put the camera down and run across the field to find one of our PAs, and while I was doing that, I missed the important moment. When the director asked me later what had happened, he wasn't happy at all. He just kept saying, how don't you have a multi-tool over and over again as though he couldn't believe it. Since then, I've carried a multi-tool on every single shoot. I use one from Leatherman called the Wave and I love it because it comes with a bunch of screwdriver attachments, but there are a lot of other brands that will work just as well. Just make sure it has a good set of pliers, a strong flathead screwdriver, a decent knife, and ideally the ability to attach some different screwdriver bits. I also use my can opener way more than I would have expected, so that's nice to have. There's nothing complicated at this point, just invest in a good multi-tool and take it with you everywhere. Just don't forget to take it out of your carry-on luggage if you're traveling because I may or may not have lost one or five of these to airport security. The last thing I try to tell myself to make every shoot go a little bit better has nothing to do with gear and everything to do with your mindset. Filmmaking can be fun, sometimes really fun, but it can also be stressful. A simple mistake can get blown out of proportion and totally ruin your mental state if you're not careful. This makes you harder to work with and more prone to mistakes and generally just less effective. And that's the last tip on the list. You have to try and relax when things go wrong. It might seem like the end of the world when you break that lens or forget a battery, but it's more about how you react to that problem that will determine the rest of the shoot. If you fall to pieces and can't get your head back in the game, the shoot is doomed. An amateur freaks out when things go wrong, but a pro just accepts what is done and starts looking for a solution. Be like the pro. When something messes up your plans, take a deep breath, relax, and get on with it. Once I shot an entire scene about a drag race in Mexico and I did that classic thing where I thought I was recording when I was actually hitting stop record and vice versa. So every time I hit the button record, I was cutting the feed. I ended up with like 50 clips of the camera pointed at the ground and I didn't get a single shot of the event we were there to cover. It was a huge client that I really wanted to impress and I really thought my career was over, but I owned up to it and got on with the shoot and I actually still work with that company today. Mistakes happen. Just make sure that when they happen, you respond like a pro. Obviously none of this stuff is rocket science, but it's amazing how much of a difference you'll notice if you make sure you do all of them before every shoot. The easiest way is just to make a checklist on your phone that you can keep looking at throughout the shoot. For sure there's a lot more to being a good cinematographer or filmmaker than these seven things, but it's pretty incredible how much getting these basic things right will streamline your shooting experience. Making documentaries is complicated, so take care of the simple things out of habit and free yourself to focus on the creative. If you want to hear about some times when things didn't go so well, you might like this video that's about a bunch of different ways I've failed as a filmmaker over the years. This business is a marathon, not a sprint, and making mistakes is just part of the job, but only as long as you learn from them. See ya.